Hey biology students. In this video, we're going to describe terms related to epidemiology. So epidemiology is the study of patterns, sources, and spread of diseases in populations. Here are some terms that you should familiarize yourself with when we describe the patterns of infectious diseases. So we use the word sporadic for a, sort of a rare or irregular occurrence of a disease. Endemic, if that disease is relatively stable every year or certain times of the year or in certain locations. Uh, we use the word outbreak when we're talking about just a really localized increase in the number of cases of a disease. Um, we have epidemic for a disease outbreak that spreads over a larger area and maybe even multiple areas. And then we use the word pandemic for epidemics that have spread worldwide. Let's take a look at some examples using these terms. So here we're looking at a, a map of the United States and we see that we have the sporadic occurrence as well as the endemic occurrence of the disease called Lyme disease. We are going to discuss the details of, the, of Lyme disease in a future video, but you can see where the hotspot areas are. So taking a look here at the, the northeastern United States, completely shaded in parts of Massachusetts and Connecticut and parts of Pennsylvania. Um, also seeing some endemic areas here in Wisconsin and Minnesota. And remember, endemic means that the numbers of cases in that population is fairly regular. And in this case, it's fairly high. And that's because these are parts of the United States where there are um, ticks that carry the Lyme disease. And so especially in the summer months, those cases of Lyme disease do uh, routinely um, reach the tens of thousands of people infected because in the summer months, you're more likely to be, of course, outside and more likely to become infected with, um, with tick-borne illness. Take a look, though. We have sporadic occurrence. So you see there's, a, there's these little dots in some of these other states, um, Idaho and Utah and New Mexico, and that's because it's really rare. There's only a few cases there as opposed to in the endemic areas. Let's also use that word endemic for malaria in Africa and also parts of South America. So in red, we're looking at malaria, very, very prevalent okay, in all of those um, geographical areas. And again, that's because malaria um, is spread by mosquitoes and those particular mosquitoes that particular species of mosquitoes that harbors the malaria parasite, which is called Plasmodium falciparum, happens to, to live in those particular geographical areas. Notice here in the United States, we are in a green zone. The green zone is a known known malaria. That's because we don't have the mosquitoes, this particular species of mosquitoes that carries the Plasmodium parasite, although we do have other species of mosquitoes, obviously. Let's take a look at this, uh, how it appears graphically. So using the term outbreak. So remember, that's just a localized um, increase in infection in a relatively small number of people. So in this graph, we're looking at the onset of gastroenteritis, which is another word for food poisoning, after a wedding dinner. So something at that wedding dinner was contaminated with bacteria and a lot of people got sick. At um, the peak, we have about close to 35 people that are sick um, and then those numbers decrease over the next couple days. It's not a super serious situation. It's a relatively small number of people that become sick and by easily contact tracing these people or figuring out, figuring out where they've been in the last um, couple days, well, there's a commonality with all these people. They all attended this particular wedding dinner and they ate whatever the dish was um, and they all got sick. 
So we use the term epidemic if we see a contagious pathogen that's spreading to larger and larger groups of people. Now this is a graph that I found of the Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome uh, version of coronavirus. And you may have heard of this one because it, um, the first cases were reported in 2012. Now it's actually still ongoing, but the cases, the epidemic of MERS, which began obviously in the Middle East, that's where its name comes from, uh, those were actually reduced eventually, okay, with control and quarantine. And here's a picture of the current pandemic that we are all experiencing right now. This is the map that I like to use because it tends to have the most updated information. You could see the time stamp of when I took this screenshot. So this was April 7th at three o'clock in the afternoon. So at that point, we are being shown the total number of worldwide cases of COVID-19, right around 1.4 million cases. We can also see on the map that this has gone worldwide. This is a pandemic. This is epidemics that have spread worldwide. And if you recall, it was March 11th, 2020, that the World Health Organization finally made the official declaration that COVID-19 is in fact a pandemic where we're seeing epidemics erupting all over the world, starting in China in January, where we sort of got wind of that in here in the United States, although what they're showing is likely this particular novel strain of coronavirus crossed into the human population for wildlife probably in November of 2019, but some of those first cases were described in um, December and in January in China, and then quickly spread to Europe. So we've heard about large epidemics in Italy and in Spain. And right now in the United States, we are leading in the number of cases. So just under 400,000 cases right now. And worldwide, we're looking at 81,000 deaths worldwide. Pandemic, you're living in it right now. Let's talk about the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. So this is sort of a watchdog agency. It's part of the US Public Health Service and they do keep track of infectious diseases nationwide. Certain diseases are required by medical professionals to report to the CDC and they keep track of those numbers. So they keep track of a lot of data. They also publish that data and make it publicly available to access on their website. They report it to the World Health Organization. So the CDC really oversees the United States, okay? It's located in Atlanta, Georgia, and they oversee the health of the people of the United States and they report that to the World Health Organization and the World Health Organization oversees the health of the world. Here I've put a link to one of their annual tables. So they publish something called the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. Okay, so here is actually the weekly tables, the nationally notifiable infectious diseases and conditions. And it's telling us this is for week 13 of 2020. So you can look at a specific disease that you're interested in, and we can see the totals by state of that particular disease. Um, let's go ahead and take the most common sexually transmitted infection in the world, and it is chlamydia. Let's click on it. Click on the PDF. So we're going to look over here at the chlamydia trachomatis infection caused by the cl chlamydia trachomatis bacteria. So it's showing us the current week in the United States, 5,896 cases. Here's what the previous 52 weeks the maximum was. Here's the cumulative to date in 2020, um, 314,000 cases of chlamydia. 
and from last year, 444,000 cases. So chlamydia is fairly stable in the population. It's usually very high numbers. We would say it's endemic. <laughs> it's endemic to the United States. Here we could get the exact counts. We could figure out which state wins for the most cases of chlamydia this week. So they're breaking it down by region. Pennsylvania is pretty high. Ohio is high. Virginia is winning, 678 cases. Ah, Colorado. Colorado takes the cake, I think. 1,245 cases just in Colorado in the current week. Wow. How are we looking, California? Oh, we're looking good. 17 cases of chlamydia in the state of California. Very good, Californians. So the other day I wanted to show you comes from the California coronavirus website. So obviously the public health departments also keep track of relevant data and we can click on, we can find out information about COVID-19 from covid19.ca.gov. We can find out, now this is not the most updated, so this was April 6th, which is actually now two days ago, and it's showing us the number of positive cases in the state of California and the number of deaths in the state of California. And then we can look at that by county. Let's see this one. Hospital data. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here we're looking at the statewide case statistics by county. And it's telling us also by day in the state. So in the state, it's telling us today, or the latest day that they updated it, which was April 7th, there was 1,992 cases just in one day, down from the day before, which was about 1,500 cases, which looks like it's our peak right now so far. that day on April 6. So in the state of California, we're actually looking at 16,957 cases. By the way, this is our total cases, including old and new cases. So this would be something we call the prevalence rate of COVID-19 in the state of California as of April 7, 2020. And then this number, the 1,092, this would be our incidence rate. So the number of new cases just in one day. Here we can see by county, the number of positive cases. Oops. Los Angeles is winning with the most positive cases. San Diego, we are in second place. Okay. So let's talk about these terms in epidemiology, the incidence rate of a disease, the number of new cases in a specific time period in a given population. So we can find that out um, about COVID-19 by going to the public health website there. And then prevalence case, case uh, rate takes into account both the new and the old population cases. And usually how that plays out is prevalence is greater than incidence. And so we see the curve for incidence is lower than the curve for prevalence. Okay, now let's do some calculations using incidence and prevalence rates. So I found this information from the statewide sites and the link is at the bottom of this slide. So what we want to do is we want to calculate incidence rate, and this is going to be in California for COVID-19.
And remember, incidence refers to number of new cases. So this is only for the current day, which is April 7th, 2020. So from the graph, I can see that number here. So I've circled it. That's the number of new cases. That's not the incidence rate though, right? Because we have to calculate that. So that's the number of new cases. So the way we do this, if you recall, we did you did some calculations like this in the lab on epidemiology, lab 33. So this becomes an equation where we do the number of new cases divided by the total number of people in the population that we are looking at. And then this value, you're going to want to do that value first in your calculator. And then you're going to want to multiply that by 100,000, so per 100,000. So we had to look up, I had to look up population of California. So this was from 2018, but good enough for me. <laughs> okay. So we're continuing this equation here. So we're doing incidence rate. And so that would be 1,092 new cases in California for April 7th divided by the total population, which is 39.56 million. And then we would take that quotient and we would multiply it by 100,000. Let's see if I can pull up my calculator on my computer so you can see how I plug that in. Okay, so let's plug in those values. Okay, so then we multiply that by 100,000. We get about three people were newly infected. So it's saying my incidence rate would be equal to three. It's basically three new infections, new COVID-19 infections per 100,000 people living in California. Usually you would write that as three per 100,000, but I'm spelling it out in a little bit more in detail there for you. Three new COVID-19 infections per 100,000. That's the incidence rate in California for April 7th. Okay, now let's do the prevalence rate. So let's change that to prevalence rate. So I'm gonna erase a couple things here that aren't important for prevalence rate. Okay, so now let's calculate prevalence rate of COVID-19 in California. And that is as of April 7th. So, so they've been calculating this since March, it looks like. So up to date through when they began keeping track in California of the number of COVID-19 cases. So it's not on a specific day because when we look at prevalence rate, Here we're looking at the total number of cases that have occurred so far in the population. 
So it's more like saying the prevalence rate as of April 7th, although it's been, it's the cumulative now since they began um, keeping track of the cases and testing here in California. So this problem is now the total number of cases in the population And that is divided by the, still the total number of people and then multiplied by 100,000. So the prevalence rate here, now what numbers are we going to use? We're going to use this number here. So this number is telling me the total number of cases in California as of April 7th, 16,957. Divided by still our grand total for number of people in California, and then multiply by 100,000. Okay, so let's take a look at what that number is. And then we multiply that by 100,000. There we go. So it's about 43 per 100,000 in California as a state. That's our prevalence rate. Versus our incidence rate for a specific day, it's just three new cases per 100,000. And then our total cases in the state so far in the pandemic would be 43 cases per 100,000 in our population. Would you like to see how that looks in San Diego County? Well, let's take a look. So now I looked at and took screenshots for us of what San Diego County looks like. Let's highlight the important numbers. Total number of positive cases in the county as of today, 1456. And then here's the incidence number, new cases in the county as of April 7th. Tied with San Francisco today, it's at 50 cases. You might want to try pausing the video at this point and see if you can do the calculations. Oh, and I had to give you this number too. Here's our total population in San Diego, about 1.4 million. See if you can do the calculations to calculate incidence rate. This would be for San Diego on a specific day, April 7th, versus prevalence rate in San Diego, so more of our cumulative number per 100,000. So you have all the information there. You should be able to do these types of calculations on the exam. So you might want to pause it, try it out, and then I'll do the answers for you. Okay, so incidence rate Remember is number of new cases. So number of new cases in San Diego as of today, new cases were 50 out of the entire population of San Diego, which is approximately 1.4 million. Multiplied by 100,000. 50 divided by, I'm gonna put the actual number in.
there we go. So 3.5 per 100. Three point five new cases per one hundred thousand. What was the San Diego? Uh, sorry, was the California average? We're a little bit higher than the California instance rate. California as a whole, three new cases per one hundred thousand today. San Diego, pretty close to that, maybe just a tad higher, sh showing us three point five per one hundred thousand. Prevalence rate or cumulative average. Okay, so there we take this number divided by our population, which I'm just being shorthand about it, but I'm putting the full number in my calculator as you can see. Then multiply by 100,000. One oh two. One oh two total cases per one hundred thousand. Is our prevalence rate in San Diego? So there are 102 infected people in our population of San Diego per 100,000 people in our population. And that is higher than the state average. The state overall is 43. So see, as you, get, as you look at actual counties, those numbers are going to change a little bit. So here we're looking at the whole state of California where the prevalence is telling me there are 43 infected people in the population of California per 100,000. However, in the county of San Diego, there are 102 infected people per 100,000. So we're a little bit higher than the overall state average. And you actually, if you look at the website, you'll see that Besides Los Angeles, I mean, Los Angeles, we could do their numbers. Maybe I'll put that one on the exam, huh? <laughs> um, have you do those numbers? Because their numbers are much, much higher. They are at a higher hotspot area right now compared to us. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful and can do that type of calculations on the exam.